So this is the very first video I'm doing and it's gonna be a beginner's video. This is geared towards maybe a Windows user that hasn't ever used Linux or maybe only used it sparingly. And what I'm doing is comparing workflows in this video. So even if you don't use Linux, you may get something out of uh, the Photoshop portion of this and go, oh, you know what, I never saw that uh, feature exist and maybe help you edit thumbnails better. But what I'm doing is I'm taking Photoshop and GIMP, my two workflows I've used uh, in the history of this channel, you know, it's only about a year old now, and how I've done thumbnails back when I used Windows in using Photoshop and how I use it for GIMP and those workflows are completely different. You know, when I'm using GIMP to edit my stuff, I use scripts and many other features that just simply don't even exist in Photoshop. And that's how I'm able to do things faster in GIMP when it comes to content creation or, or thumbnail creation for YouTube. Now, that said, I am not a professional. I am not uh, somebody that edits images day in and day out, but most of the population isn't. So what happens is people know Photoshop really well and they don't know GIMP at all and they get over to GIMP thinking that their Photoshop talents will somehow uh, transfer and it simply doesn't. Uh, it's, it's very two different, very very different workflows even though the work product is the exact same for the most part at the end. Um, I actually like my work product a little bit better out of GIMP because I'm able to do a couple other features here that I'll showcase but I'm going to show you how I do stuff both using Photoshop and both using GIMP. So you can kind of discern how the two programs work differently, maybe uh, pick up some things to make yourself work faster in both programs. I mean, it, they're very both very good programs. It's just, again, they work fundamentally different. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into changing things around. And uh, these are gonna be stock installs. So my Photoshop, no customizations. My GIMP, no customizations except what I show for in this video. So it's both right out of the box, right freshly installed. So uh, let's jump over on the desktop and start with Photoshop. Okay, so here is our typical Photoshop layout. And in this video, we're just gonna kind of do a sample thumbnail and show you the different workflows. I haven't used Photoshop in a little bit, so I might uh, flounder around a little bit here, but we're just gonna make a typical YouTube thumbnail real fast and just kind of compare the two between the GIMP install and actually Photoshop. So this is pretty much a stock Photoshop with no customization. So let's just grab a photo and do some quick edits and make a sample thumb a sample thumbnail. So I'm gonna just go in here, pick out a clickbaity, uh, oh, image, we'll copy that over into here and see what we get. So, oh, there we go. This is this is one of my old headshots. I remember this, I shot this on a C920 webcam. So uh, we have awesome backgrounds. I, I missed the bookcase. This is right when I started my YouTube channel. So you have your background. Uh, typically I would blur all this out and kill it, but we're gonna just leave it for this example because we're not gonna probably keep this. And then we usually would keep you know, some text up here. So let's write some text uh, as far as the text color. Let's flop that over to white. And we'll just say clickbait title. We'll highlight that. And let's bring it up to about a 72. Oh, wow. All right. So we have that right there. We have our clickbait ish title. We can move it around with our little arrow, line it up a little bit. One thing I do like about Photoshop that GIMP does not have is this alignment utility. I like these little purple lines that kind of show you where everything's at. I'd like to probably bevel this and do some other stuff. So I usually just right click the layer and then just do some sample blending options. Just something really easy. Just give it, make a pop a little bit. We'll do an outer glow um, and then we'll just do a drop shadow to make it pop. So with that, you get kind of this title. Now I could do some more here. Um, probably a, a good thing would be to take just, oh, let's say a background. Um, let's let's create a new layer and just make some blocks behind it. This is pretty much the, the YouTube formula that pretty much everyone uses. Some people don't even go into the effects portion, but I recommend doing at least that. 
Okay, so we added a couple rectangles to behind this just to give it that uh, aesthetic. So we'll take these, this title, pop it up above that. Uh, let's merge these down. So I'm going to merge this one down real fast. So we have our basic title, however, that that is outline. I usually feather it and kind of round the corners a little bit. And then what I like to do for a typical title like this is just kind of take some of the opacity down. So we'll take a little bit of opacity so you kind of see through it, get some of that background. So this would be an acceptable YouTube thumbnail that wouldn't just be completely horrible. Now, this is what most creators do, and usually they'll they'll stand bes beside like a green screen and then maybe even do another layer here, but I just wanna give you the sample workflow for Photoshop. This works really well. I do really enjoy a lot of the feathering options and how it works is just a far different experience from GIMP. So everyone kind of knows Photoshop, so I'm not gonna beat a dead horse here. and just kind of show you a sample thumbnail in here. I really don't do too much past this. I do like some of the blending options and some other cool like fire effects that you can do in Photoshop. Uh, however, the same thing can be accomplished in GIMP, just not in the same way. Much like when it comes to Windows and Linux, when it comes to Photoshop and GIMP, it's just two completely separate beasts. You can't think that you know one and therefore you'll know the other because they're just separate. Even though they do the same thing, uh, they fundamentally just work considerably different. So here's Photoshop. All right, so here is the basic install. This is GIMP completely fresh off the install, much like Photoshop. Now, it's gotten a lot better. If your GIMP doesn't look like this, and you had like Ubuntu or Pop! OS or Linux Mint, and you have a whole bunch of weird windows everywhere, it means you're probably on GIMP 2.8, and what you need to do is upgrade to 2.10, because 2.10 gives you this look and feel, which is far superior than the earlier versions of GIMP. I'll leave a link uh, to an article on probably my website, ChrisTitus.com, how to upgrade your GIMP to 2.10 on like Ubuntu-based systems. However, on Arch, it's gonna install the latest and greatest, so we're, we're on 2.10 in this video right here. Now, the first thing I like to do is change the look and feel. It has this kind of grayish look, and a lot of times I want more of a darker theme, so I like to go to Edit, and then go to Preferences, and then simply under Interface and Theme, I like to change it to more like a dark, and that gives it a little bit of a dark theme. Now. Uh, notice there's a bunch of stuff kind of all over the screen. All these windows can be customized, so uh, you can change these at will and drag and drop stuff, much like Photoshop now. Before, they had all these windows kind of floating around in GIMP, and it just was horrible. And where a lot of my earlier frustrations came from, so I just want to showcase those two things because that really is what caused a lot of my pain and anguish starting off. The second thing is, you remember when I was doing on Photoshop, uh, beveling and, and glows and drop shadows and those types of things? Well, in GIMP, there's no real good way of doing it in a simplistic manner out of the box. So the very first thing I like to do is add what's called scripts. And I've done videos on this, and if you want a more in-depth explanation, but Basically what a scrub does is it has some of that stuff. Now, the default stuff here for drop shadows and things is simply, uh, I, I don't particularly care for it very much. That's why I like to go to where gimphelp.org and download some extra scripts. So let's do that real fast. So we'll go gimphelp.org. Okay, from GIMP Help, they have like these huge bundles, so like arrows and extra brushes and everything you could possibly want is kind of in here, which is neat. However, I like to just go to effects selection because, again, I'm not a power user. I kind of just like certain things here. So if we go to effects selection here, and uh, I really like the glow command. So I'm going to go glow, and this is my bread and butter when it comes to a lot of my thumbnails. So I'm going to just show you this real fast. So it shows you the result. You can highlight certain things that are selected rather easily. So we're going to just download this guy and hit save. Um, other things I like to do and what I'll probably end up doing is just grabbing the whole bundle, which is like everything, patterns, scripts, the whole nine yards. So let's just grab the entire bundle here. And I'm going to open this and just extract this to the downloads. 
So in the downloads folder, we now have our GIMP scripts. Now there's a ton of stuff in here, so I don't recommend dragging and dropping all this. I play with some of this, or maybe you want to install it all and just figure out what you like and then just delete the nonsense that you don't. Um, but I, what I like to do is just kind of pull it in here, go to my home, and then you need to go home.config and then look for GIMP and our version 2.10. Again, a version is very important, otherwise you might be lost in this video. And under 2.10, you go into scripts. Now, there's a couple scripts in here I always use. Um, the very first one is the glow selection, which you see that. Uh, effects selection glow, right here. I'll drag and drop that into there, which I already have. And then there's a couple other ones I really like, save as JP. G and save as PNG. This is where you pick up some of that effectiveness and things that are just so much faster now that you've learned this workflow in GIMP. And that's just over here, you can see it, uh, save.jpg and save.png. I've already dragged and dropped these into here. But with these, you have a ton of power. So I'm just gonna show real fast how I did. So we'll close this out and we're going to go ahead and make our thumbnail. We've got a couple of those things, the, the glow effect selection from GIMP help. And then also the save as JPG and save as PNG are two really big ones that I use all the time. So uh, that's pretty much it. I, I'm not an advanced user by any means, but this helps me get around. So let's create a thumbnail. Okay, so we're going to take this old school thumbnail now and create a title in GIMP. Here's here's the little headshot that I've already pre-taken. Oh man, I love my old school thumbnails. They're so great. Uh, and we'll create our little font, fonts here. I can flip through and select this. I didn't do this on Photoshop, but it's the exact same. That's why I really didn't mention it. Let's take a bold Cantrell font here and we'll put click bait title and then we can simply highlight all and then uh, one thing I kind of like uh, which you can do this I believe in, in Photoshop as well but this is a little bit more efficient <laughs> in my opinion once you learn this so you put your clickbait title here and then boom now you noticed how the the layering and some things I, I just enjoyed a lot better on how it did it in GIMP but it's a lot different than Photoshop and I, it was not my initial thing. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go over my layer here, alpha to selection, and then we're gonna do kind of like an outline to it. So we're gonna go effect selection, glow, and then I like to do the opposite color of whatever I'm working with, um, or something that like picks out. Let's say I wanted like a yellow, I can just do something like this. Give me that pop to, to the actual thing. So now we got this, um, our image looking like this, I can just merge this down into it. And then we're gonna do it one more time here. We're gonna alpha to selection. And then I'm gonna get like a nice little drop shadow, but a little bit more harsh. I like it to really pop. Instead of doing those rectangles like you see everyone else that uses Photoshop doing, uh, with GIMP, I like to just kind of blow their uh, glow selection completely out of whack. So let's say I go five and I feather the radius by 20 and then I just take a really harsh color like black to contrast my stuff. And what you end up with is something that really stands out. But at the same time, it's not really that difficult to make. This is pretty much ready to go. I just go down to the bottom base layer. And then I literally just go file, save as JPEG. Bam. Thumbnail is made, ready to go. Literally, that just took uh, about 60 seconds for everything to be put in there and good to go. So I really love the fact that how simplistic GIMP is when you utilize some of these scripts. But you saw out of the gate, just the initial setup process wasn't ready to go with just like Photoshop was. It took me a little bit to have like this formula to success. But once I've established this workflow, I like it far better than I ever have Photoshop because it's faster. I can use these scripts to really just uh, fly through all my workflow and be done. And then you don't have to worry about any of the Windows side effects like you do with Adobe. It runs on Windows, you have updates, you have just general, uh, a lot more overhead and slowness. So once you get used to a Linux workflow like this, there's a big difference. So this was the GIMP 
side of things. So there it is, Photoshop versus GIMP, the different workflows. You have the Photoshop Windows workflow and you have the Linux GIMP workflow. As you see, they are very different and I can see why so many people hate GIMP coming from Photoshop myself included the first 60 days on Linux and I forced myself to use GIMP. I hated every single second of it until I really buckled down and learned new features and figured out scripts and, and these things I showed in the video really is what had me turn that corner and go, oh my God, I love GIMP. I actually like GIMP better than Photoshop now, which I never thought I'd ever hear myself say because I absolutely hated it when I started. So with all that, let me know your tips, tricks, or just a plain comment down below because a lot of times you get so many great tips. And like I said, this is a very basic user. I'm not a really big into graphic design or anything, and many other people in the community are and can probably tell you a lot more stuff you can do. I just want to show a simplistic thumbnail creation, both using both programs, because I think it's very important. So... Uh, Again, let me know in the comments below if you had any tips or tricks. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.